Hi, I am Dr. Goodmanson. This video contains supplemental material intended for my students in my aircraft design classes at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, where I currently teach. The video features excerpts from my textbook, General Aviation Aircraft Design, Applied Methods and Procedures, now also available in a Chinese translation. The book is available online from a large number of outlets, including Elsevier and Amazon. It is recommended for anyone interested in the design of general aviation aircraft. Greetings fellow aircraft designers. In this video I continue my design of a small LSA using the aircraft design code surfaces. If you have not seen part one of this video series, I strongly suggest you view it first to better understand what we're up against as well as how we got to here. It is only a little over 10 minutes long. I also want to make the following point. The method I'm using can be called an improvisation design method. It is a fancy phrase for trial and error. It cannot be accomplished effectively unless you have access to software such as surfaces. I recommend you use a far more structured approach such as that of the design algorithm in my book. That's what I really use. At any rate, let's continue where we left off in part one. The aircraft I've come up with is almost ready for its first run using the Vortex Lattice Solver. Let's open the form that allows us to run the solver. It's called the VLM Console. VLM stands for Vortex Lattice Method. Let's press the Freestream Properties icon to see what the current angle of attack, airspeed and altitude settings are entered. The current angle of attack is 7.8 degrees. Let's change it to 2 degrees. The current airspeed is 100 kcas. Let's leave it as that. Always check the value of V-infinity, the far-field airspeed. It is what Surfaces uses for the solver. The other airspeeds are just there to allow the user to enter this airspeed in a more pilot-friendly form. It is usually best to have these formulas in these text boxes. You can refresh them by pressing the standard airspeed formulation button. These equations are set up for low subsonic airspeed, which is why there is no equivalent airspeed step between the calibrated and true airspeeds. Next, press OK to exit. Then press the Solve button to get a flow solution for the current free stream properties. Oops, there is an error notification. It appears there is an error with the input values and that we must check the information tab. This refers to one of the tabs on the worksheet's utility pane on the left hand side of the window. The report states we have an unusable reference area, span and cord. Clearly we omitted that step in part one. Let's fix this. To do so we can do two things. We can either hard code the actual wingspan, wing area and reference cord in the proper place in the program or we can hand over that responsibility to surfaces. I'll go with the second option. Hand it over to surfaces. This can be done by selecting Edit and then Establish Geometric Relations. This opens a tool to help us set up the algebraic formulation that keeps track of this. Surfaces is a symbolic vortex lattice solver, the only one in the world. This is an amazing capability that allows the user to create and enter mathematical formulation that is solved before the solver is run. This permits deeper analyses than I have time to describe here. But one example is that one can create thrust devices whose contribution to stability and control is also dependent on the angle of attack and angle of yaw. This permits evaluation of control surface deflections required to trim in a one engine out situation. It's remarkable. This is accomplished in part by storing all data in specific variables called math objects which are stored here. The reference data that is missing must be entered either manually or by using this tool. So, to have surfaces prepare the geometric formulation for the wing, I start by pressing this button and then follow the instructions on the screen. First pick a vector representing the root cord, then the tip cord, then pick a point representing the leading edge of the root cord, then the tip cord leading edge. The following vector selection is only needed to have the program calculate angles such as the dihedral angle, leading edge sweep, quarter court sweep and mid court sweep in case we need that information. In order to do this correctly I would first have to create the quarter court and mid court vectors. Since I haven't done this yet I'll just pick the leading edge vector for all and make a mental note. 
When done, the established geometric relationships tool reappears. Let's repeat this for the horizontal tail. Pick a vector representing the root chord, the tip chord, a chord representing angle of incidence, quarter chord, here again erroneously using the leading edge vector, and finally the two surfaces comprising the horizontal. Then repeat for the vertical tail. Pick the root chord, tape chord, quarter chord, and surface. Finally, let's have the program keep track of the weight of the aircraft. This feature makes surfaces calculate current weight of the airplane, its center of gravity, and moments and products of inertia. These are needed for the dynamic stability analysis later. Now let's close this tool and take a look at what has happened. You can see that numbers have replaced the zeros and errors that were visible before. We see the reference chord, which is the mean geometric chord, is 4.08 feet. Reference wingspan is 19.92 feet, because introducing the 5 degree dihedral in part 1 slightly shortened the original wingspan of 20 feet. Additionally, the wing area is 79.7 square feet, and the aspect ratio is 4.98. Math objects can be inspected and edited by double-clicking. Now let's take a look at additional parameters of interest. The horizontal tail volume is 0 0.2873. It is way too low for this class of aircraft. It should be closer to 0.7 according to table 11-4 in my book. But remember, in part 1, I pretended I didn't know what the heck I was doing when I plopped the horizontal tail down. I will resume this pretense for now until surfaces tells me different. Also, the vertical tail volume is 0 0.0307. It should be closer to 0 0.04. Now that we have fixed the problem with the geometric parameters, let's try another run. Let's reopen the VLM console and press the solve button. Uh-oh, another error. What's this? Yes, this can happen to you too. This blunder was caused by a so-called piercing vortex error during the preparation of the aerodynamic influence coefficients. This can be solved by changing the number of surface panels, but if that fails, it usually works to raise the panels as much out of the plane in which they lie. I am going to do this by raising the horizontal tip points by 0 0.01 feet, which is close to an eighth of an inch. Alrighty, let's reopen the VLM console and press the solve button. Success! Surfaces is solving the model vorticities. Now we're going to learn something. Here, the distribution of pressure coefficients is being shown, but let's start by checking the distribution of section lift coefficients. Select the Strip Results tab and place check marks next to the CL surface vectors and curves. Then click the two wings. Voila! Section lift coefficients are visible. They tell us a lot about the aerodynamic properties of our wing, including allowing us to predict where the wing will begin to stall, how the stall will progress, and what will be its maximum lift coefficient. This is the distribution of section lift coefficients on the horizontal tail. It points in the negative z direction because of the downwash from the wing upstream. Soon, we will be learning a lot about this airplane. First, I want to get organized. I am going to create groups and move the geometry into each group. To do this, I click on the Groups tab and press the Add New Group button. I am going to create a group for points, vectors, nodes, left wing, right wing, horizontal tail, and vertical tail. To place objects in a group, I select them first. Then I move the mouse cursor over to the group list and right click to open this menu. There I select the Add Selection to Group command. Then I select the appropriate group and press OK. Once in a group, I can turn it on or off to display the items. OK, the last thing I will do in this part is to estimate the position of the stick fixed neutral point. To determine the neutral point, reopen the VLM console, select Tasks, and Determine Neutral Point. Press Analyze. In my view, this point is the most important entity of stability and control theory. It marks the aftmost center of gravity position permitted in the airplane. Forward of it, the airplane is stable. At it, 
neutrally stable, and aft of it, unstable. Of course, modern military fighter aircraft are unstable, although only when flying subsonic. When supersonic, the stick-fixed neutral points moves aft, making them stable. All modern fighters have fly-by-wire control system to control the airplane for the pilot and make him or her feel like they're flying a stable aircraft. Anyway, the position of the CG can also be too far forward. We will check that out later. Like you see, it took surfaces only 5 seconds to determine the stick-fixed neutral point. To do this, it uses two methods with two flow solutions. We must transfer one of the results to the model. The transfer allows the user to check various influences on the neutral point without having to worry about overriding the representative value. To select which method to transfer, I look at the two solutions and select the one farther forward. Here it is method 1. I also copy the report, as it contains information about time and date. Then, if the model is changed, this routine must be run again. Then, I paste the report using the remark command. This will store it with the model. To show the current position of the central gravity and neutral point, select Tools, Options, and check this checkbox. Press OK. There you see it. Of course, the current CG position is aft of the neutral point. This will be fixed in part 3 of this video series. In part 3, I will determine the maximum lift coefficient for the configuration and will check to see if there are any problems in trimming the airplane for level flight. It should be quite the lesson. I hope this video has helped your understanding of the power and convenience of surfaces. Please consider giving it a thumbs up rating on YouTube. Thank you for watching.